What is up guys, welcome to video 7 here in this tutorial on the Lumberjack Underground video game. In this episode we are going to be updating our coins that we just drew to the screen and make them look like they're animated. So let's jump right back in. If you go over to your entities.js file here, we have our coin class. What we need to do is, let me show you. So if we go here, we pull up the sprite sheet. What we're essentially doing to make this look animated is we have four different images of the coin and all we need to do is cycle through all four real quick and actually in this game it this animation doesn't make it look like it's flipping but it actually just changes the color and it, it does the animation that Mario and the Mario games did so we are going to be using all four of these images and we're just gonna be cycling through them and it will give it an animated look okay so what we shall do we need to come in here first thing i'm going to namespace this so now this self has reference to whichever coin instance we're on and what i want to do is i am going to first want to create the sprite animations so we need four of these essentially so we have you see how we're creating a sprite here we need four new ones for those four different um, images of the coin so i'll call this uh, sprite animations I'll set it equal to an object and this we'll call it spin i guess it's not really spinning but that's the best name i could come up with and inside of that i'm going to create an array of frames and inside of that array I'm gonna have just four of these entities but the coordinates are gonna be different so on this one it's at 115 0 10 and 14 like that and on this one it is 131 pixels over to the left of our sprite image there and this one's at 147 okay i'll save that and now we have our frames i'll also want to now just throw in inside of this object here our current frame and i'll set that equal to zero awesome so now I have four different images, all those four different images loaded in, and I have a current frame, so I'll know which image is currently being displayed. And what we'll want to do now is we are going to want to make a state machine, even though in this instance there is only one state that this coin is going to be in, and that's spinning. But um, I think it's good practice, and it's good to stay consistent. So, And if we want to add in the future, it'll be really easy. But we'll set this equal to an object the state that we have is going to be did it seem like something jumped over a little bit there no okay so the state is it's going to be in a spinning state like that and in this spinning state we need to have an animation that occurs okay so I'm going to set this equal to a function that has data. Okay, so underneath that, I'm going to set this state so we know, by the way, this coin's current state is going to be equal to self dot states dot spinning. So normally in a state machine, if we had multiple states, like let's say this was, well, I'll show you later. When we use our lumberjack character who can jump, he can run, he can move left, right? Those are a bunch of different states. He can only be doing one at a time, right? He can't be going, moving left and right. So what's going to happen is we, all we have to do is change this state. That's what a state machine is. This current state will always be running animation or whatever, but it's going to change whether or not it's spinning or... Or jumping or, or whatnot and I'll, I'll show you that in the next video so 
Okay, so in this video, what we need to do is we need to animate. We just need to cycle through essentially all four of these different entities. And the best way to do that is I can do an if statement here, and I'm gonna go based off of our animation frame. So I'm gonna do modulus. If you haven't seen modulus before, what it basically is doing is it is returning a remainder. So let's say this animation frame is at 100, and I say modulus 13, and I'm gonna set it equal to zero. Essentially what this statement is doing is it's saying, okay, 100 divided by 13, or 13 divided by 100, um, no, 100 divided by 13, how many remainders are there? So for instance, if I pulled out my handy calculator here, and I did 100 divided by 13, there are seven, there are seven different instances of it, and then there's a remainder, and, and this is giving me a decimal, but there's gonna be a remainder. So let's see. If I did seven times 13, so 91, so the remainder is gonna be nine. So essentially this right here is returning nine and I'm checking to see if it's equal to zero. It isn't equal to zero. So in that case, it's going to do the else part of the statement. But if it is equal, then it will be, it will jump inside this, this scope here. So essentially, if you think about it this way, I'm saying every 13 frames run whatever I do inside of this scope. And that's gonna be, I'm gonna be changing the image. So what I can do is I can say self dot sprite. So every 13 frames, I'm gonna change that sprite and have it set equal to a new image from our sprite animations dot spin dot frame dot frame sorry and then self dot sprite animations dot spin dot current frame so very first is going to be frame zero and all i need to do is i need to increase that and the way i'll do that is i'll say sprite animations dot spin dot current frame plus plus so it increases one every time but if I just do that after the fourth frame this number is going to be equal to four and there's only four in here so an array in JavaScript obviously it goes zero one two three so it can only ever be up to three zero to three if it's four we're gonna get an error so we can throw an if check in there and we can say if this self dot sprite animations dot spin dot current frame is greater than the length of that so there's three so if it's greater than three then i'm just going to simply reset it back to zero so i can copy this and paste it and say then i will set it to three perfect so if we save that, now we have that state machine in, we have all the code written to get this coin to look like it's animating. The only thing we have to do now is call the animation cycle. So first what I wanna do is let's jump over to our game file. And inside, actually no, let's go over to our folder structure. Let's create a new file inside our JS folder and we'll call it animation.js. Let's do our normal creation of an object literal. Um, we don't need an init on here because we never do anything just the first time. It's always just an update. So I'm gonna create an update function like that and pass in a data object. Let's save it. Go over to our index.html and we need to import our script. Oops. Uh, equal to animation.js. Perfect. Save that. And now inside of our game here, we don't do an init, we just need to come down here and inside of this update function, I wanna call 
animation dot update and I want to pass in that data. Okay, so now we have that. If we go back into animation update, all I want to do is I just want to call this method that we have on our coin. I just want to call this method right here. So the easiest way to do that is I'm going to, um, yeah, I'm going to break it up into a function here just so it's easier to read. So I create a function called coins on side of this animation module and pass in the data. Uh, why don't I keep doing it? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cycle through. So we had that object or that array. If you remember right, and data.entities, we had a coins array. And that coins array now is going to have a bunch of instances of coins, which will have our state machine that we just created on it. So if I for each through it, I can call the animation method on each individual one every single time. So coin dot current state and animation data just like that so what this is doing is the same current state animation if you remember we set the current state to be equal to states dot spinning so right there we have access to now on current state we have access to this animation method and that's all I'm calling I just do animation boom and I pass in data the object that we're using it goes through it needs that so I can get the animation frame and now it should be cycling through so we just need to call it so if we come up here I can just go animation dot coins and instantiate it and pass in the data and now if we save we should be seeing that our coins will be animating so I'll go back and load up our HTML file and voila there you guys go so it's just like in the Mario game there it is animating and making those coins look like they're animating or changing so yeah guys I hope you guys enjoyed this episode on animations in the next episode in video 8 we are going to be creating our actual character so the lumberjack guy little dude I think we'll call him Jack maybe Jack the lumberjack and um, then after that we'll we'll get to the fun part where we can draw him to the screen add a little gravity let him fall down um, and then we'll continue on with the course so yeah guys I hope to see you in the next episode later <laughs>